Hello guys and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your own UHC server in Minecraft version 1.8 and beyond. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder for the server. And so I'm just going to go ahead and name it UHC. And now what we need to do is we need to get the server file. So what I've done here is Right now we're still on the 1.8 snapshots. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, download the snapshot. When 1.8 and future versions come out though, you're gonna go to minecraft.net and go to download it here. And that's where you would download the exe or the uh, jar file for the server. Um, so let me go ahead and grab this. And we'll save that onto my desktop. And so now we have the server. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click and drag that into this folder. And I need a bat file for starting it, so I'm gonna copy this one I have here. And if you don't know how to create a bat file, I have a video, I can put a link in the description. If you wanna just go quickly look at that and understand how that works. Um, but in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this and so it's looking for minecraft.exe. I'm going to change that to minecraft.jar. And we're going to rename this server here to minecraft.jar. So now this bat file will start this jar file. And so you can see it's building the server. The interfaces come up. The first time you run the server, you're going to get these um, these errors, it's just saying failed to find ban list and, fan, and failed to find whitelist and, and so on and so forth. That just basically says this is your first time doing this, so those files aren't there. Uh, but what it does is it, it creates them. So now we have our server created. The next thing we're going to want to do is go into the server and start putting in some commands that will get it set up for UHC. So I have um, uh, 14w21b here on my launcher. I'm going to go ahead and start that up. And let's go to multiplayer. And then let's go to the test server. So, okay. We're in the server and we are at coordinates 154, 259. So um, we can make this the center of the world, or uh, let me go ahead and opt myself so I can go in and go to fly mode. And so I'll go into game mode one, which is creative. And let's go ahead and fly up. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna make the center of the world zero, zero. Uh, and we can do that with commands. So what I'll do is uh, I'm first I'm going to teleport myself. Actually, I think we can do that without it, the name now. So TP, we'll go to 0, 77 is the height, and then 0. So now we are at the 0 coordinate for the world. We're going to let this load for a second. And okay, I had to fast forward that because it was taking just a second to load. Um, but basically now we are at uh, 0, 0. So what I will do now is I will put in the following command. Let's do slash set world spawn. And so now the spawn for the world is at 0, 078, 0. And so players will spawn in this general area. And this is a fairly good area here. It's kind of like a basin. So there's no like water obstacles in the way or lava pits or anything like that. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is turn off natural health regeneration. And so we'll do forward slash game rule natural regeneration false. Okay, so now the only way to heal is by eating golden apples or um, using a health potion. And so now what we want to do is we want to limit the size of the world. And this is going to be set up sort of at your own discretion depending on how many players you have. I like doing 2,000 by 2,000 just because it's it's a good number. Um, if you have like more than 10 people, I'd probably make it bigger than that. Uh, but in this case, that's what I'm going to do. So what we'll type in here 
is world border set and then we're going to do the diameter and also we have to type in a time I'm going to put zero because we want that to be immediate so normally what you can do is you can set it so that the world border expands or contracts to a certain size over a period of time so if I bring up that command again and let's say I want my final size of my map to be let's say 100 by 100 uh, each hour is 3600 seconds so depending on how long you want the match to go you can base it on that um, so if I type that in now it says shrinking the border to 100 blocks wide uh, over a period of 3,600 seconds. And so there we go, now we have limitations to the world and we have a gradually shrinking world. And also what I should have gone over first is actually centering the world border. So if we go to, if we type in world border center and then do zero, zero, now the border is gonna be centered on my current position. So one of the final things we need to do now is just get it set up so that players can join and be on teams. So what I'm going to show you how to do first is to create a team from scratch. So we'll do scoreboard teams add and then the name of the team. So in this case I'll just make a team name up. We'll call them the, the A team. And the A team is now created. We can take it one step further, and if we want, we can. Um, oops, let me finish that. We can change some of the options for the team. So, for instance, let's go a team, and we're going to change the color of the team. So let's make them red. And now we have the a team as being red. So what will happen is, uh, once I set myself to be on this team you'll see that uh, my name will be in my name will be in red when I type and also when you hit the tab menu my name will be also in red there. You can head over to this page right here which is uh, minecraft.gamepedia.com forward slash scoreboard and this is going to give you a list of options and commands that you can use with the scoreboard function for Minecraft. I'll include the link to this in the description um, so you guys will have it handy. And also, I will include a link to the world border commands in the description as well because there are a few that I'm not going to be going over because they're optional, but you guys may find that useful. We are then going to set up adding people randomly to different teams. And so in this case, since I'm just alone on my server um, and there's only one team, I'm just going to randomly assign myself to the A team. So we'll do scoreboard teams join and then a team and then we're going to say at who so we'll do at and then you can do random and then we'll do team equals and that basically means people who are not on a team or are so if you want to do if you already have people on teams and you want to scramble them again um, then you can pick out people who are already on a team uh, but if you want it to just be people who are not on a team, you want to leave that as blank. Put a comma, and then C for count how many players do you want in this. In this case, just one, because it's just me. Um, and then close that bracket. So we'll hit enter. And now bad touch is on the A team. So if I type something, my name is red. And if I go to the tab menu, my name is red there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to spread out the teams and we're going to do this randomly. So what we'll do is type in spread players and then we're going to type in where the epicenter of the spread is. So zero, zero would be spawn or the center of the map. Basically we're going to spread everybody around that center point. Uh, next we'll do uh, the distance from each other. So since we have a 2000 by 2000 map we can afford to do about 500. Uh, this all really depends on how many people you have playing and how big the map is. So I can't really advise you to what number to put in. 
but 500 seemed to work for us. So uh, then we do uh, range. So what's the maximum range? And we can do all the way up to the edge of the world or just somewhere in the middle. Next we'll type in true. Uh, that basically is either true or false there. Uh, true would be respect teams. False would be to not respect teams. And what that means is, are the teams gonna be teleported together or is everybody just gonna be spread out randomly regardless of team? Um, and then we're gonna say who we're teleporting. So in this case, everyone, all, at all. Uh, and then we hit enter. And now I've just been sent to a random spot on the map. Normally if I had other teammates, they'd be here with me. And of course the world's gonna take a second to load. Um, and you can see the world border there. Here I'll actually walk up to it so you can see it. It should be gradually moving inward. Uh, one thing to note is that you can make it so that the border hurts players and also notifies players when they get close to it. And so now I'll quickly go over a couple of optional things that you can do. Uh, one of them is, of course, setting the time to uh, zero or today. Uh, that basically just makes it so that right before you start the match, it's a brand new day. Another thing you can do is setting up having the health in the tab menu. So to do that, you're going to go to, or you're going to type in scoreboard objectives add health, call it health. And then what we'll do next is scoreboard objectives set display list health and so now if I hit tab I don't have any uh, I actually don't have anything up there but if I put myself back into uh, survival mode and I take some damage you can see now my health is there and so if I go back up to full health, that'll show as uh, full bars. What it does though is like the first time that you set that, uh, whoever has full health basically just shows as not having anything up there. If you want, you can fix that just by having everybody hit each other once and then eat something to go back to full health right before the match starts. If you're worried about chunks loading too slowly when you have people on the server, um, one thing you can do is preload the chunks. And the way I usually do this is just by teleporting around the map, um, I know that the size of my map is going to be 2,000 by 2,000. So um, if I just teleport myself to the different regions of the map, um, so I can go to 0, 200, or actually I'm sorry, I have to put height, 0, 200, um, and then I'll let this part of the map load, and I'm stuck. There we go. Um, I can do this and just go to all the different areas and you'll be able to tell uh, how many chunk updates there are just by looking up in the top corner here. Uh, once the chunk updates gets down to pretty low number that means that it's probably done loading. And uh, one thing you can do is just kind of like look up at the sky while you're doing this so that you don't actually figure out the lay of the land. And this is if you're going to be playing. If not then, you know, it doesn't really matter. But now you can see that the chunk updates is down to zero, so that means that it's done loading, and we could go on to the next area. One last optional step that you can take is using a mitts, and what that is is a seed mapping tool. And I've actually made a video on this tool before, um, but basically uh, you can load up a, uh, a world from random or from a seed. So in like this case, I can do from seed and we'll just call it UHC Wu. And it'll show us what the numerical value is. And then click OK, default world type. And so we can see that spawn is going to be at a coastline on this map. And so in this case, this is probably not the best map for UHC because if we do 2000 by 2000 borders, this area here that my mouse is going over is going to be the map, so it's going to be mostly or, uh, ocean. What you may want, but if not, you can just do random seeds and eventually just kind of try and find one uh, that suits your needs. So in this case, this one's a little bit better, still a lot of ocean, but getting there. Um, 
but like if you wanted to have a special map that's kind of cool, uh, this is your way of, of doing so. And it's probably best to go over to the map up here, and then where is it? Layers. You can turn off showing um, just different things on the map. Like normally when you have a mist, it's by default going to show you where villages and everything are. Um, but you know, if you're going to play in your in your game, you should probably just turn all that stuff off so you don't know where at least that stuff is. Yeah, that's pretty much it for creating a vanilla UHC server. Um, if you guys have any questions or if maybe there's something I forgot to mention, uh, please put them in the comments below and, and I'll be happy to help. So, alright guys, thank you for watching and take care.